A very good evening everybody and welcome along to the restart of EU1 and it's the start of season 7 here at Contest of Speed. A smaller season of 11 weeks, half of what we had last season and coming back from last season to join me in the commentary box once again for the next 11 weeks is Jack Prentice. Welcome back sir. Yeah, great to be back. Um, I think... Whilst it's half season, I don't think there's going to be any less excitement. We had um, the most chaotic end to the season, didn't we, with um, uh, NSX Montana proceeding to, to pretty much collapse, didn't he, to be honest. Um, he had such a lead, and then Fruitful kept going, was relentless in his pressure, and uh, the pressure finally told. But it's a new season, a few new drivers to uh, to get used to. We were introduced last week, and it's, there's no better place to start, really, than spa franc charm there is not. We have a couple of things to go through that I've made notes of, and then we'll see what times are cracking on. And if anyone can find us a weather report, that would be great. Looking a little bit cloudy in this qualifying session. Two of the last three races this week have had rain in the race and quali, so hopefully we can see some rain. Um, so, first of all, the track, Jack, you know it well, I know it well. Seven kilometres, 4.35 miles, 78% of the lap distance taken at full power, uh, 19 corners, 10 right, 9 left, and the race distance is 22 laps, and that equals 154 kilometres. Jack, you've done this race this week, got a very, very strong result. Any uh, tips or advice for the viewers this evening about Belgium? Uh, well, it's it's the perfect racetrack, isn't it? You've got uh, so much variety um, in the middle sectors, tight and twisty and technical, and then it's uh, balls to the wall in the first and third sector. Um, it, for me, it's it's likely to be, if it stays dry, a one stop. You'll probably get soft to, I'd say, lap nine, lap ten, and then you want to come in and put some medium tyres on. Potential if a safety car comes out early to get to the end on hard tyres. Indeed, the Ferrari reserve tonight, Timmy Where to next, who's uh, made a solid start to his uh, car's career with McLaren last year. Um, made hard to go to the end. They've got some very useful points at the end of uh, end of the race. So there's two or three ways that you can do it here, but um, you know, you're likely really to want to start on soft tyres and discard those. Some will start on mediums and try to do a reverse strategy, but that relies heavily on there not being a safety car. Uh, early on, so uh, certainly plenty to uh, plenty to ponder over the next 15 minutes as we set the grid and then try and find out where they uh, what they all do and how things all shake out, Libby. Uh, yeah, I've been told it's a dry night this evening, uh, a bit of a shame, but uh, I'm sure it won't uh, lack on the racing part. A couple of starts for you, everybody. You may have seen them in the Discord uh, on board with last season's champion. He's been given a 41% vote of the total respondents to win the championship. Bolin has been given a 27% uh, percentage and Vaporizer 8%. So nice to see Vaporizer in that list. 6% think EU1 will be the first title decided. That's a great result. I hope it's 0%. 46% uh, think EU1 championship will go to the last race. Again, that's not bad. It's half. I hope it does go to the end. I'm sure Jack agrees. And 16% uh, think EU1 will create the most steward tickets. That I disagree with completely, Jack. It's one of the cleanest. Certainly up until the last couple of uh, couple of races, it was all very well behaved. And then it's... Uh... Oh, went a bit mad, didn't it, really? Yep. Um, I think the USA, <laughs> when it went wet, you know, it, it rained, and then it sort of went wet to dry right at the end, the safety car bunching everything up, left people with decisions to make. Some made them better than others, but uh, apart from that, they were all generally rather well-behaved. So uh, I, I agree with your assessment. I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's going to be one of the lower tiers where it's a bit more frenetic. And a bit too. more refinement thing. <laughs> Maybe endurance too. That's an invalidation on board with Conzo. And we'll go through the oh, drivers no, in a second, every, everybody, <laughs> if you didn't uh, reach for a pre-season event. A couple more statistics. You know I like my start. stats. Uh, Spa, of course, the longest circuit on our calendar, only holds 70,000 spectators. That's the lowest of the season, by the way. And um, 11 of the last 20 Grand Prix here uh, have only been won by no more than five seconds. So that'd be nice if we get that tonight. On board with Dynastics, who's gone purple first. So we'll stay on board with a McLaren. Of course, that's uh, Jack's favourite constructor. Hey, uh, well, they're the team, so I've got to now become a Are you still hunting them, are you, for the overall constructors this season? <laughs> well, I've got to say, haven't I? But uh, 
Dynastics, when he joined um, back in the last, well, he was observing a couple of times of Renault last season. He's another man who looked rather handy, and he's looking rather handy here. Purple in the first sector, as you say. Um, as Rowan at the moment has gone at the top of the standings, he's showing his player 14 on the task, but he is Rowan because he's top. He's purple in all three sectors now. Launching it through Stavolo here, a difficult corner, but if you get it right, you gain one or two tenths on the run down through Blanchimont, which is just an acceleration zone, into the braking zone at bus stop chicane. So Stavolo's a crucial corner here, and he's, looked like he's, he's got it done well, really. Just to the outside now. Avoids the curb on the inside. That loses you times. You need to stay on the tarmac as opposed to the curb. Now, heavy braking into what is a rather odd bus stop chicane. It sort of dips and it rises and it dips and it's difficult. On the exit, as you see, Dynastics loses the rear a little bit. Goes sixth fastest. So, on a 1 minute 41.376. The rest of the lap uh, wasn't that stellar, but still uh, an excellent start to, uh, to his qualifying session. Still a few drivers uh, left to go, including Stinson. Risa, Kalydra, Conzo, Dracer, uh, Total P's, a new driver, and FBR Charlie. Charlie, who well, you wouldn't send him to uh, to go get your lottery ticket because the luck he had last season was absolutely <laughs> dreadful. Yeah, it wasn't great, um, was it? No, it was. I really felt for him, but yeah, yeah. A few drivers still feeling their way through. Um, pole last night was one minute forty point nine. It was, um, I believe, and in EU one, it was a couple of tenths, if if that slower. So. Drivers are just feeling their way through. I think this is one of the few tracks where the track evolution really does take hold. It's that longer lap that, you know, you can really gain two or three tenths if you're out on the track at the right time. So I suspect that will be the case here. It is an incredibly long lap, isn't it? Uh, hello, everybody in the stream. Welcome along to EU1. Best tier Cos has to offer by a mile. Sorry, Americans. And, uh, yeah, Timmy's got a lot of fans in the chat. Hello to everybody. Uh, I think Paul will be a 4.4. Yeah, we did say that. I had a great conversation with the IFR boys uh, before I joined Jack in the uh, in the party. And the IFR boys saying a 40.4 is possible if you hit your prime, uh, which we're hoping to see, of course, it is dry. Um, I just want to quickly shout out the social medias. We're making a, a big push at Contest of Speed to spread as much of the social medias as we can. So, of course, we've got Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube and this Twitch now. And, of course, we have a merch or where well, you can get merch from the web shop. Uh, and all revenue created is absolutely appreciated. And, of course, you can now donate to help the league run uh, or help towards the running cost it is not cheap to run a league of this size. Um, Jack, the, there's a new penalty point system this season, and that's to compensate for the reduced season. So it's 6, 9, 12 penalty points, all quali bands. Uh, that should make yes. it a little bit... I, I don't know if the right word two is... Two but... heavy collisions. I'll put it this way. It's going to make drivers think twice about um, just simply bands eye moving down, which is what you want. You want drivers to make those moves, but you want to make sure that they don't just do it willy-nilly. You want to make sure that it's considered. So effectively, two serious collisions, two race-ending collisions, then you're on a qualifying ban. And I, I personally support that. I think, you know, yeah. if you're strict, then it just means that drivers may think a little bit more, which you don't see very often in most other leagues. I have to say that this particular league is always been very strict and always been very uh, firm on uh, standards and as it should be but um, no it, it just means that drivers are going to have to think a bit more and race for their brain I, I personally think that's a great great thing to be uh, yep. advocating to be honest Stinson's had a really good lap so far he was purple in the first sector he had a little bit of traffic on his way round and he goes on a 1 minute 41.2 fire fast Stinson it was um, it fell away at the end, but it was certainly a very good opening stint, so it's uh, certainly one to watch. Recently, meanwhile, goes second. He went. Fastest in the first two sectors. Yeah. But half a tenth off. That's all he lost. Just three quarters of a tenth in the final sector, and Rowan hangs on. So, he does. Uh, very close indeed there. And this is. Uh, I remember. They only did it once, but China 2019. Uh, Ted Kravitz put a ruler on the. or a tape measure on the floor to show you how much seven thousandths of a second is in China. And it's not a lot for a what well, however long China is. So these times will be uh will be good to see if they can be really close because it's such a long lap time, I'm sure it will be. Very competitive this season. Very incredibly competitive. Every single person. 
especially a lot of the top dogs from last season will fully believe they have every chance of doing well here. Charlie has set a 48.65, which is four thousandths of a second quicker than Rowan. Good lap by the Alfa Romeo driver. I did not expect that from Charlie. And there may be a couple of surprises like that if people put the practice in to do well tonight. And that's a good lap, a good benchmark as Fruitful just tips him by 45 thousandths of a second to pole. Cool hands Carter's the next man I think who's going to be across the line with a, a timed lap anyway. Uh, and he is now just coming into the bus stop chicane. Uh, he's been really ragging it. He was he knocked the brake into the Rivage hairpin um, and has been on the edge all the way around. So interesting to see where the Canadian puts himself here. The uh, one outcast, if you like, puts himself seventh for Haas, the North American driver in the North American team. Puts himself in seventh now. He slows right down to a crawl, I think, because there's other cars that are coming round. Very well done there, certainly very aware. Uh, and he's got enough time to get himself back to the pits at leisurely pace, which you want to do because tyre wear here is crucial. Such a long lap as well. If you really do take it out with those tyres, then, you know, you're going to probably lose yourself a lap or two. Um, in the race itself, if you start in the top 10, which of course he is at the moment. Purple second for Simply Rush, for Simply Charlie and uh, the Simply Boys. I was going to say the Simply Boys, but it's the FBR Boys. Simply and Charlie putting on a good show at the moment. Vaporizer is in P3, 40.843. Bolin has gone pole 718. That's over 10th from Fruitful. Bolin entered a quick shot quality with the IFR Boys when I was watching them and just came in and put a 40.5. So there is room there. Not quite sure what the track temp is. Not quite sure what the clouds are doing to it. Uh, Reese, uh, who just tipped there jack someone just crossed the line. might have been cdr colin ingolo cdr from last season who's on the same time as dress a basson uh that's for p8 calzo has just moved up to p6 if we look at the leader gap on screen it's Over not bad well, it's it, very close indeed isn't it it's not bad for the seven kilometer circuit half a second <laughs> between first and 12 how good's that the collider is He's last, he's just invalidated and his second attempt now. So Collider, he can get back to the bits because he invalidated at Stavolo. But um, that's going to put him under massive pressure now to get it right because at the moment he faced starting right at the very back. United yeah. Bosnia is coming round now to finish his lap, I believe that is. Who's that, um, sorry? In the Force India. No, he isn't. No, ignore me. But I believe Conzo, Conzo is. No, 19th. Yeah. He's <laughs> coming round to finish his lap. He is absolutely in the Renault, Mr. Conzo. The Red Bull boys have switched to the another R, but it's a Renault Alpine next season, of course. Conzo crosses the line, was 19th. Yeah. It's 50. So can he get back to a pits in time? Maybe. There's a slight delay on the no. timer. So he may just have more. Yeah, probably not. No. It's a lot um, of people. It takes nearly two minutes to get round. He'll have a minute in the pit lane. So that's his qualifying done. But um, it's been yeah. a bit of a struggle for him. He's had technical issues trying to get into the session. So uh, 15th would be regarded, I would suggest, as a bit of a save. Well, I said, Jack, to the IFR lads before I left for you that in this tier this season, you will get punished for not driving to a prime for not getting that lap time in you will be punished because everyone else or a large majority will be going and putting those laps in consistently and the ifr boy said yeah you're right we will be punished if we don't put our good laps in and that's good i mean look look at that everybody i mean i've watched every single tier e3 e2 am1 uh, am2 sorry we've not been that close i can tell you that right now the top seven separated by less than two tenths of a second that is close and that is exactly what me and jack wanted this season and it looks like so far we're getting it and it's last time for last batch laps you know i call it here's fruitful going into the corner but i thought genuinely had no name it's actually called no name corner and i never knew that and it's made me so happy Okay, speaking of no name corner, I think that's where Jacob's going through. Oh, he's invalidated on his uh, outlap, so he's not losing his sleep over that. But he want to make sure he brings himself in because he is 19. Yep. On a lap time that, frankly, is a second slower than what I said. So, uh, obviously, it's well within the capabilities of Jacob to, to push himself up a little bit further, as it is for a couple of other drivers. Now, 16 is less than a set, well, he's less than 9 tenths off of first. So, yep. you hit the right bit of track. You know, when others don't improve as you, if you really, really rag it, 
you know, that's the difference Black between sixteenth <laughs> to uh, to tenth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not yet. Not yet. He not might yet. be in EU one in a, in, a, in, in time to come, but but certainly not now at the moment. So Dynastics is um, not an underdog, but he has shown pace. He ties in P8. Bozeman ties in P13. People out, coming out of the pits trying to get out of everyone's way. Here comes Charlie up the hill over the Eau Rouge River and up to Avalon down the Camel Strait. He goes and he's off on a lap. Um, I'll read the comments during the formation lap, everybody. I've just got the tasks on the screen so we don't miss too much. I've had to zoom it out, Jack, to 67% on the laptop so I can cover the whole 20. I'm very surprised Charlie has it invalidated over that curve as well, but we move. Okay, so Jacob's another man who's just on his lap at the moment. 19th. Just getting himself now into Leckham. He's already a tenth up on what he could do previously. It's 29.9, so he's moving himself in the right direction to try and get himself off that back row. Bit of a contest of speed uh, success story. He's moved himself up the ranks from EU3 as it was the bottom tier uh, way back when to uh, be a solid midfield runner in EU1 now. So as he fires himself with the corner with no name. Some may debate what that name is, but that's what we're calling it I here love tonight. It. Uh, being into Puon. Flat out through Puon then. You just go down the break. Oh, you loose rear. No, that's not going to work. He's, well, he's not improving that now. Is he's, he uh, out? Yep. He's in the barrier. He's oh, stand by here, Jack. This is going to be tactical from Simply Rush and Charlie here. So Charlie was 8 milliseconds faster than Fruitful in the first sector. The second sector haven't tipped through. The Alpha Mel is giving all his teammate every bit of slip stream he can. Charlie could have a, say, a really good go at pole here because it's been a good lap. I've been on board with it. Through a bus stop again, across the line. Can Charlie get himself the first pole of the season? Second. No, just off. Bastard's in the third sector, you'll be shocked to hear, but he goes uh, P2. Fruitful sets a 716, bowling 718, but he's got time to improve because he's on a lap. Vaporizer's is down up. to Puhon, who's coming across the line. I think it's a Ferrari who hasn't moved up. There's a Red Bull, it could be Dressé Basson coming into a bus stop chicane. ABS off there, low fuel of course in the bottom right corner, check and flag is out potentially, but there may be a Renault who gets through Dressé Basson. It's only 11th place. So, Bolin is a tenth and a half up just in the first sector alone, so he's got plenty of time in hand now. He's coming into the Fania chicane, and um, as long as he keeps it well balanced, I would suggest that he's going to take pole position back off of his teammate. Very all oh, just keeps it within the white lines. He's attacking, maximum attack here. Very planted through Stavolo. Now it's an acceleration zone all the way down through Blanchimont and into the final bus stop chicane. Now, he's got a Haas in front of him. That won't hurt him too much. The Haas can move out of the way. In fact, it'll probably help him. He's just on the line into... Oh, hang on. I don't think it is going to help him because he's... Oh, Carter just moves out of the way. They've been praying there, but Bolin, but Carter did move out of the way. Fortunately, he saw him coming, but now as he fires himself out of the final corner, I think this is an early 40. It is not quite an early 40. But a 1 minute 40.5 sees Bowling comfortably clear on a, one, a two tenths of a second faster than anybody else. But still, I mean, well, let's see his, it his research across the line in the Mercedes was P7. It's P3. It's on the second row of the grid. There's a Ferrari to cross next, but I think he's gone into the pits. It may also be an Alpha Mel. No, it was CDR who crossed ninth fastest. And the next one to cross the line is Rowan. He goes up to P5. And uh, the Alpha Mel simply is backed off. Uh, is there any cars to come through? Uh, there is two. Well, there are two. There's United Bosnia, who's invalidated. Tibi where to next, who's invalidated. So know that. That will set the grid once these two finish and cross the line. An old Williams front row. It's a 40.5 Bolin has set. 40.7 for Fruitful Risa and Charlie. And 8 for Rowan Vapiser Calzo. Incredibly close. Leader gap on screen. Top 17 by eight tenths of a second it's good to see on a seven kilometer track and he's very close isn't it very very close indeed it certainly bodes well uh, for the rest of the season it certainly means as well that any any points finish you pick up it could be by salt doesn't it because some yep. drivers will be quicker elsewhere vaporizer me you know last season was uh, one of the top runners three tenths off here and i wouldn't bet against him being uh, towards the sharp end for most of this season it's not a lot, no. is it? Three no, tenths. Look, I mean, three tenths from where Cool Hands Carter is in 11th, three tenths would have won him possibly P2. <laughs> you know, that's that's where we are as well. 
if you look at if let's just take Bolling out of the equation for a second. If you take Bolling's time away, let's say it matched the point seven, it's half a second between basically the whole grid. That's that's, that's incredible. Pretty I mean. much. I mean, if you take into account that Jacob made a mistake on his final lap. Mm. And uh, Jacob made a mistake. United Bosnia is reserving, so we don't quite know where he'll be. And Timmy didn't get a good lap in at the end either. It's eight tenths of a second from from pole to seventeenth. But that's crazy. That really is crazy. It is crazy. And we have seen in the other tiers at the start of this week, pole does not win all the time. I mean, last night second one, um, American. Pretty sure pole didn't win. And um, I can't remember the EU3 one. Um, I did watch EU3. I was in a watch-along channel with Alp, which was a lot of fun. I would recommend a lot of you do that if you have some spare time and can speak on Discord because it was so much fun. I mean, me and Alp were just doing our own mini commentary for EU3. What you don't want to do is miss EU1 because tonight I have a feeling this could be a very, very good and competitive race. It's not about Turn 1, is it, Jack, really? I mean, you could be ahead at Turn 1, but it's really that... Uh, by the way, if you can take the hill flat, it's 28 seconds from La Source to the end of uh, the Kemmel Strait, which is actually longer than the Azerbaijan final corner to first corner. Um, so a lot of overtaking opportunities, even from likes out. Probably going to see a lot of battery burnt as well, Jack. Maybe I think unless, unless you scamper... From from turn one, you're really going to be in trouble by the time you get into uh, to Lecum. You'll certainly be under yep. threat from second place. But with it being a Williams front one two, it's an IFR one two, and it's two drivers who are quite quick, uh, are quite respectful. Sorry, in terms of you know they will give each other space. I mean, Bolin for you know being in probably the worst position, you know he he could really have picked the worst person to have starting behind him. Obviously, it depends as well on. You saw corner. his start in America, fruitful. I didn't even notice it, but you, you straight away, he was fourth to first by the first corner in the wets. Yeah. yeah, I don't see that happening. It's too short a run, but um, certainly, if you mess a start up here, all is not lost. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, I see one red light. Is the light good? Mate, we, we've, I've been better work, but I believe if you see that one red light, we're in good stead. Right, it's formation lap time. It's a long formation lap. Um, we did mention, Jack, that Haas have taken the first two, see, uh, two of the, uh, the wins in the three other tiers. So Haas looking strong. So Williams will want to put a message here, right? And stamp yes. their foot down. Yeah, they will. Uh, yeah, they, they really will because... You know, um, they've had a solid start to the season, as most other teams have. So, to be 1-2, it's a big, big chance for them. There's no no two ways about it. It is a big, big chance for them. So, um, no, I'm with you here. I think that... Uh... Yay. Tyres, Jack. So, the tyres are... Oh, sorry, just setting up the system on my laptop. You caught me at the wrong time. Oh, no, I did I? <laughs> so well, I'm just, I'm just no, checking my worry, tires as well. <laughs> so, you've got the top ten all starting on soft tyres as per what they qualified on. But then you've got Cool Hands Carter, Dre, uh, you've got Cool Hands Carter, Simply Rush, Boatsman, Konzo, Collider, Timmy and Jacob all starting on mediums. The, the I was about to say Force India, it's now going to be an Aston Martin from next season, isn't it? Of United Bosnia is starting on hard. Only two drivers in 13th place, Dre Sebastian, and 15th place, Total P's, starting on soft tyres. So what they're going to do is they're going to bank on being able to get through the traffic early doors, get into the race, uh, and then see how things play. It might be that they can go a bit longer because they've got extra laps, or might well be that they simply stop earlier, really push those tyres and see if they can undercut. But, uh, yeah, 15th place starting on soft tyres, I would suggest that he may be gambling on a safety car because we have yep. had safety cars early on um, in the other series, either virtual or a full course caution. Absolutely. Bolling at the front of the grid is making his way on to the... Uh, the, his spot. I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, season starts are always interesting. Of course, we just see what happens and, and tell the story. But uh, yeah, many things can happen in racing as Bolling puts his car on the grid and we'll go on board with a McLaren at the back. Any final words, Jack, before we get going for what's probably going to be a chaotic 40 minutes? 
I think you summed it up perfectly when you said a chaotic 40 minutes. I think that's exactly what it's going to be. Um, going to be fast-paced, action-packed, and it will go very quickly because it's 22 laps around Spa Francorchamps. It's one of the shortest races we do. Here we go then, Jacob, the last man on the grid for the 22 lap race around Belgium. So, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the start of season seven here at EU1? It's time to go racing. Alex likes it out and away we go and Folly gets an incredible start from first he's ahead of his teammate and the standards are messed up and there comes Reese there's another Alpha Tauri on the inside and the Alpha male just comes behind four cars wide at the start of the source as we head to the hill so it is Reese uh, sorry Bolin ahead of Fruitful then comes Rowan and Reese Reese has gone wide on the hill and he might just get overtaken by his teammate too and it's a Noah's Ark grid for most of it as we head down the Kemmel straight jack and the two Mercedes are going wheel to wheel here and one of them's got the inside line but he steps off and an Alpha Mel tries to nick his nose in to the com and the other Mercedes comes on the inside to turn eight I believe that is and gets the move done what a move that was they're gonna be three wide into reverse just never gonna work but Charlie barges his way through it all started when we got crossed up through the middle of uh, Rouge it sent him wide Calvo capitalised on it straight away. Now Charlie, Charlie forces his way down. Very auto, uh, very optimistic driving there. Stinson, meanwhile, basically didn't help his teammate there at all when they started fighting through the fast right-hander at Malmody. Sent the other car wide and their foot lost out to Charlie. Vaporizer as well has fallen back to eighth place. He won't be happy with his start. The man that will be happy is Rowan. Rowan is up to third place. So an excellent start from the Flying Dutchman. What can he do about the two ahead? Timmy, where two nets has gone off at campus. The Ferrari is at the back. And what a start by Council. As you mentioned, up three to four place. I didn't even notice the standings were horrendous. Charlie's in fifth place. Then comes the two Mercedes. And Stinson might be having a go. And Charlie on the inside of a bus stop chicane keeps that place for now. No DLS until the start of lap three of course then comes vapor is in eighth place cdr in ninth place and there may have been a, a mistake by bolin or is it a standings glitch it may just be a standings glitch don't worry i'm not doing a crofty in silverstone he is still first okay so the damage uh, appears to be from dynastics he's retired and a bit too ready so uh, he must have had some quite bad uh you know, he will have had at least some poor, uh, some bad damage. And looking at it, his front wing was affected. Timmy is, meanwhile, carrying on. Uh, it, I don't know how those two came to grief. I think Dynastics was ahead on the road, so I think that there was some uh, issues there. The standings, again, are changing around a little bit, which is what we love to see from Codemasters. It's not total season lead. He's uh, second to last. He's 18th. Uh, he is... And that's quite in itself. Uh, yes, so... It's difficult really to break away um, early on. I think what they'll be looking to do is to try and sort of fill the gap in the middle sector because there's so much of a slipstream, so much of a DRS um, advantage as well from the first corner all the way up the hill. So what you need to do really is get your work done in the middle sector and then you give yourself a little bit of a breather because in the straight lines is obviously where it's a lot, lot harder to catch up. Unfortunately, yep. Rowan looks very quick in race trim, doesn't he? Yellow flag at campus. We saw Ferrari go off last... Oh, it's another Ferrari. It's CDR. The two Ferraris having moments at campus. Both of them going off. And uh, both Ferraris now at the back of the grid. Of course, Dynastic retiring uh, early on. Uh, Carl Centipede, though, for everybody else. Right from Bowen, Bowen at the front. Oh, uh, down to total peas in the Alpha Tauri at the back. There may have been a, an overtake for Vaporizer on Risa. And here comes Simply Rush to try and make a move to on the medium compound tyre as well. The Mercedes tried to stick his nose in, but he can't quite. The Alpha Mel got shaky. And now Risa's all over the place because Dresse Basson has now passed him in the Red Bull. Not a good lap for Risa down seven uh, from a start of lights out. It's been a dreadful start, hasn't it? Um, he started third. He was excellent. I um, mean, qualifying didn't have a bad start. He lost one place to Rowan, but then he lost all composure. I think from uh, Er Rouge upwards because it's difficult to settle into a rhythm once you've been overtaken so much. I've been there myself quite a lot. You'll be shocked to hear, but um, really, it's it's awful. And once you do lose one position and then another and then then another, you just it, it flusters momentum. you. Momentum. Yeah, yeah, momentum. Exactly right. It flusters you, and then you have to think, okay, well. I mean, he's also damaged. You can see there's also issues with his front wing. Um, I don't think that's helping. 
Yeah, yeah but uh... Roman just went wide, Jack, and I thought he was going to get overtaken by Calzo, but he somehow saved it. Also, Simp uh, Dresse Basson passed Simply Rush down to uh, down the camel straight just a few seconds ago, and uh, all of them pretty close, Jack. I mean, leader gap yeah, at the moment is 8.9 to 15. That's incredible. Uh, there's a bit of a gap though from Vaporizer to Dracer, so I think Reese is just going to hang in there now until lap five, lap six, and then maybe either put medium tires on. Medium tires will make it to the end, um, or maybe go to hard tires. But um, no, the, the front five, front six have really broken away, and so it's oh, just a one long Jack. DRS train. I've just seen why Reese is struggling. I don't know if you've mentioned it at yes. 25%. Yeah, I have. But I know exactly what you're about to say. Front wing's absolutely, uh, well, it's it's damaged, oh, isn't it? In the front right happened? corner, which is why. I haven't seen it. I can't see for certain what's gone on, but um, certainly that will be affecting him. So, uh, hence what I said about him uh, hanging in there, uh, which he will do now to lap five, lap six, and then maybe pit early and try and see if he can undercut on those medium tyres, knowing he's, he's going to take the pain later on. So, for the fourth time out of 22 laps, we head up the hill, and the river it crosses. The two Williams, I'm used to saying Mercedes from last season, the two Williams are at the front. Then comes Rowan, then comes Calzo, then comes Charlie, then comes Stinson, then Vaporizer. Risa has got past Carter with some slipstream and assistance, and then comes Caladre and Conzo just behind one another. And that's for P12 as they head through Lecomte, then comes Boseman, then comes Jacob, then comes Pease. But United Bosnia, who's a reserve for Racing Point, and the two Ferraris, of course, who have had pretty treacherous incidents at campus. But no damage for either. Reese has fought back against Cool Hands Carter. Cool Hands Carter, who has probably got the ignominy of um, taking the first corner cutting penalty of the season. He's already built up three seconds to three warnings in three and a half laps. Doesn't bode well for the young Canadian. He needs to pull himself back in, otherwise, he's going to end up messing any chance up of points. Just as I say that, if I try to decide, he's going to have three seconds. He's another man who's going to have to watch his steps for the rest of the race. Because penalties, as Wizard proved last night with 10th place for McLaren after being 13th or 14th for most of it, they're really going to be quite crucial. Could be an overtake here, Jack, coming down, blocking him on. And the Mercedes has gone wide, and the old Mercedes driver might overtake the new Mercedes driver here. Round the outside goes Vaporizer, and he might have the inside to be out for a male for a double overtake, potentially, as they are now going to go wheel to wheel down to the source. But I think Charlie might just have it. But uh, Bottas on the Hamilton last year round the outside. Is it going to happen? Oh, it is. Back Vaporizer, two moves in two corners, but he's got the hill to navigate now, Jack. Well, uh, he better hope that he's got one or less than a second, and I don't think he has. So it was an excellent move. It's full of skill, brilliant driving around the outside, but I don't think Charlie was disappointed to see him pass. And indeed, he wasn't because uh, Vaporizer doesn't have DRS, so he's going to have to fend, 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 and he, he does it rather well, to be honest. Charlie's ran out of VRS. Um, oh, we're free wide, wide Jack. Wide. We're free wide into the con. Red Bull Mercedes Alpha. One of them has come off second best. It's Caladre. Went wheel to wheel in with a Haas, I believe it was. I might be wrong. And he's just been spun round. No damage. But that has cost him a lot of time. Uh, it's ambitious going through wide through Lacombe. There was always going to be one person to lose out. And I think at this early stage, one of them should have backed out, really. I'm not. I'm an EU3 driver, I'm not here to tell their EU1 drivers how to drive, but maybe somebody would have been uh, better off just, just pulling out, settling back in and picking up the spores a little bit later on because it's cost Collider quite a bit and he's now way back in 16th. Absolutely, on board with Simply Rush in the Alfa Romeo. It's talked a lot about Alfa Romeo, doing well so far, 6th and 9th. The old Racing Point boys, I believe, Jack, I think that's correct. Racing Point last year, uh, Charlie yes, and Simply. Yeah. My so memory's he's... not great, but yes, they were racing point last year. Both of them very, very quick, but neither of them had much luck last season. So I hope that changes around a little bit. And uh, Alfa Romeo, in general, quite a strong team this season across the tiers. So, uh, you no, know, solid points here will be all that's needed. Charlie Pitts from... I think he from does. Five. So, either he's going on mediums and uh, getting an early undercut, or he's gone to hards. Neither of which is a bad plan in my view. He Thanks. does, right. I have asked Stinson's the latest to uh, get himself in the book for a uh, extending track limit. He's got another three seconds added to his time at the end of the session. So. Oh, simply rush here, Jack, on P7. Dress a 
Bassin, and I think that is an easy move yeah. with DRS some move. DRS. He's got quite a lot of ERS left as well. He's got 50%, whereas Dracer had 10%. I think that's probably something to do with it, because when you get underneath 10%, you start to lose that engine power. It sort of goes into self-preservation mode, that, that electrical power, and it really does limit your power output, which is why... I, th I think the drivers call it clipping. I'm not 100% certain. Yeah, I've heard, that. I've heard that. I've heard that, yeah. It limits the power, and it just all, almost feels really like you're hitting a brick wall. <laughs> Just stops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just it, you feel the power, and then all of a sudden it just it, you notice it not there anymore, and it's like you know you, you're thinking, okay, well I'm going as flat as I can. Nothing's happening, and I think that's the effect that Dracer had there. But he's uh, behind simply now. As long as he stays within a second, then he'll be able to conserve a little bit, stay in DRS, conserve a little bit, uh, and regroup. That's a three-second penalty for Jacob onto the book, and you could see there on board with uh, Reese's gearbox as he tried to go through sector two. Sector one is doesn't require much downforce, and now there's a sector three to be honest, but sector two is absolutely destroying him uh, with that wind damage. And look at the cars behind him. There you go. That's the pit stop for Reese. It's an awkward pit stop, that isn't it, Jack? It's so tight. I mean, we can't, I don't even want to know how many times I've hit that wall. Well, fortunately, these are a bit bigger and better than us, so uh, they yeah. don't have that problem. He's going, so six laps on softs, and then he's going to rest on mediums. That's doable. Front wing change won't help, but that's doable. Uh, yes, it is awkward, especially when you're on or, and a poor tyres, especially because they're going to be understeery, so you're not going to quite know how much input to put in. So, uh, no, I, I see exactly what you're saying. Fortunately, I've not hit that in a little while, but it, I'd be lying if I said that that hadn't happened to me. Uh, but um, no, he negotiates it well. P18, he's just going to run now the rest of the race and try to get points he can pick up. He's quick enough to do it. He showed that in quality. So yep. we'll, we'll see from here. He's incredibly quick. It'll be nice to see some overtakes from Mr. Risa after that incident or something. Whether it was self inflicted, I'm sure it, may, it might have been a wheel to wheel action, but we just missed. Uh, Total P's has passed Jacob out of a no name corner, and that's because Jacob just came up with a bit of grass and took some damage for it as well. Jacob's got some damage to that right end plate of that McLaren and uh, McLaren's struggling for points this race. I think that might be, unfortunately for Jack, a zero point race for McLaren. Never, never say never. All right, no. I'll bring that back to you in 15 laps. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not been a, not been an easy start for, for McLaren or indeed uh, there's a couple of teams that have struggled. Um, but uh, no, it, ha it happens. Um, Dynastics has had uh, you know, one of his worst races. He's normally very, very quick. As two drivers pit, a vaporizer, I believe, and Fruitful are both in. So they he's gone for the undercut, really. I think he is. Uh, Rowan is also in as well, simply stayed out. So Fruitful and vaporizer are going for the undercut here. Bowling, though, is that quick that he might be almost immune to it. Not Probably not from Fruitful. I think Fruitful may get him. But uh, NSX Vaporizer, well, he's going to need to put in a stellar lap um, in order to, uh, to overhaul Bowler, which he's capable of doing. But um, it requires a bit of luck with the traffic, and I don't think they've got it either. They're just out behind the Red Bull of Collider. Probably going to be a Hass on Hass overtake here, using DRS down the camel straight. And that is Boatman into not net P4, but it's P4 for now. Then comes Carter, then comes Conzo, and you've got uh, only Bolin, Calzo, and Total P's that are on the soft. Vaporizer and Charlie having a battle through Lacombe. Racing point Alpha through the next corner, and the racing point is just ahead. No one's giving up, though, as we go down to Brussel corner. The 180 inside line for one of them, outside line for the other, and the racing point has won that battle as they now head to the no-name corner, and what a nice little fight that was. So United Bosnia is really doing a good job for the team here because he's holding up Rowan. He's also doing a great job for Williams because um, by holding up Rowan as he... He uh, tried. Rowan just gets past, well, Rowan gets past into Fania, but the damage is done. He's been held up all through the middle sector. And unless uh, Fruitful gets stuck behind Collider, which you don't see happening because he's three tenths behind now, just coming out of Stavolo, I think it's going to be, you know, he's, he's done his job there, hasn't he? And he certainly... A bit of a bigger gap, hopefully, for, for Bowling to fall back into. So this, 
Yeah, uh, this is big for the race lead, everybody. And um, Bolin has led from lights out onwards. It was incredibly difficult for me and Jack to spot the first three laps. So all the standings were completely fuzzled. But on board with Fruitful, as he now tries to take the lead of his Grand Prix, didn't look like he get, uh, got held too much as he's coming to the source now. Where is Bolin? He's just making a right-hand turn out Bolin's of the pits out. now. It's going to be incredibly close, but Fruitful has got ahead. And has Rowan got any clothes here? If he's got momentum because it's quicker coming out of the source, he may get a move on Bolin from Caladre here. Uh, let's no. have a look. Uh, no, Jack says no, I say back. yes. Let's have a look. Uh, Bolin trying to get some slick stream on Fruitful for the race lead, but here comes Rowan. He is gaining, and Bolin on the inside of the comm. Four, then one. comes Fruitful. It's all stayed the same order, apart from Bolin retaking the lead, of course. Oh, that was close. So, it was kind of taken as read that Collider would lose out to, to Rowan, but... Um, Bolin and Fruitful. Bolin has got past Fruitful. Williams were never going to take each other out, uh, but what they were going to do is make sure that they didn't uh, didn't glide, and whoever was on the best line was going to slot in. Fruitful's a team player, and he knows that it's a long season ahead. So, yeah, uh, no, a very good driver from Williams, but it was always likely that Bolin was going to be on the attack rather than defence, with Collider being a bit of a roadblock for, a roadblock for Rowan. Thank you to everybody tuning in, fantastic viewers. Uh, as all week it has been for the other streams, thank you so much. Your support is greatly appreciated. And hopefully we're putting on some good racing action. I mean, it's been superb so far. Let's see if Fruitful can mount to push. Rowan, a tenth more. He could have had them both. Genuinely, a tenth more at the start of that source. With uh, Caladre just being a little bit more forward, he could have had both. But uh, Bolin and Fruitful, then Rowan are the top three. Caladre and Vaporize are going wheel to wheel, and Caladre's come off second best again. He's lost a, not as much time as last time, but he's lost time. Maybe only a second or two, but he's gone wheel to wheel twice this Grand Prix, and he's come off second base with a slight back end spin. Mediums aren't working out for Caladre because he's 10th already. Um, he's got you know, a couple of quicker drivers behind him on, or on fresher tyres, sorry, and when he does pit, He's going to have it all to do on soft tyres, so at the moment they're not working out, but he may as well stick with it because it may well come into him later in the race. Calzo has surpassed Vaporizer, just going into the comp, that's P8. Here's United Bosnia, who is getting very close to Caladre there, but stays behind on those hard tyres. The reserve driver filling in for Jelt tonight. Thank you to United Bosnia. He's trying his best. He said he'd get lapped twice. He's doing a good job so far. And Stinson just gets past him there in the Mercedes car. Well, it's important stuff for him as well because he's still got his race to come, hasn't he? A little bit later on. Yep, that's right. And, you know, it, it's a, a, a really high class load. And I mean this with no disrespect to AM1 because AM1 has gotten better and better. And I think it's the strongest, uh, its strongest point. But it's very, very difficult. Very few drivers from AM1 come in and make the step up. In, and get straight to the sharp end. So he's doing a really good job. He's sort of lower midfield, but he's competitive. He's in the race, and he's not out of the, in terms of points, if there are to be retirements later on, which could well happen. He was also seen just getting out of the way and not causing any mischief, which is great. Well, no, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. No issues with that at all, because, um, you know, some sometimes with the reserve, you worry if they're going to be unaware of the co of the consequences of having a, a race-ending collision. But he's shown plenty of awareness there, so uh, no complaints from me. Charlie is about to get past United Bosnia, two different countries, the United States, Bosnia Herzegovina. I don't know. Maybe he's got a reason for it. Who knows? Uh, Stinson is on the back of Caladre, and. Uh, Boatsman, just further ahead, might have a go on his teammate, but I think they're quite close to the corner at the moment, so I don't think that's being done. Here's Stinson on Caladre, as just mentioned, left-hand side, quite simple with DRS, and that is a move done. Now, Bosnia might try and get back on Charlie here. Nope, just cuts in behind, and Dresse Basson is trying to go on the inside, and United Bosnia being very, very nice there, and getting out of the way for the Red Bull. So, just looking ahead now, the top four drivers, both horses, um, sim simply rushing the Alpha and Conga. They're all on um, uh, medium size. They've made them last this long. Yeah. They're now 10 laps. They're probably going to go to about lap 15, lap 16. But with the exception of simply, it's a DRS train. So, behind Cool Hands Carter, you've got Postman, you've got Conzo. 
Bowling and Fruitful are catching up quite, you know, quite a rate of knots. You know, it's, it's second this lap alone. At what point do you think they'll catch up? And do you, I mean, I see it personally as, as they, they could get stuck behind for a lap or so, which could bunch the field up. Yeah. Do you see that? I mean, that's that's what I see happening. And then I see it. At some point, probably with lap four, with fourteen laps done, with no hint of, of wet weather, some might come in for soft tyres and really have a run at it. I think the top four can all be considered a good bet for points here, especially with the way yeah. things are going in the lower midfield. I mean, look at the leader gap. You'd say pit cost here is not too about 15, bad. 16 seconds compared to sort of with a VSC. Elsewhere. With it's a, a short pit lane, and you get a shortcut, really, coming out the first corner. You do save quite a bit of time. Yeah, with a VSC, Jack, I mean, what, I mean, I mean, 15 seconds is 10th. I mean, with a VSC, they could mount an absolute incredible push. And when a safety car comes out, well, safety car comes out, they're on fresh soft tyres. These guys are Everyone not on pits. fresh mediums. Happy days. Everyone pits. And they'll be in front. Postman is he'll get stuck and probably lose about 10 seconds. That's, uh, so he really yeah. does need to get past Cool Hands Carter if he possibly can. I'd be interested to see this battle because it's not going to be long until they're going to be jostling for pit lane position. That's an Alfa Tauri. And he's Total facing P's. the wrong way. Total, Total Pease is in strife. I didn't see how it was, but he was uh, in combat with Risa and with Timmy, if I'm not mistaken. Damage. Near that area non-existent i don't no, think no damage apart Just from time. his tires his race and his pride yeah simply rush though not bad i mean stuck to the mediums five and, five and a half, half seconds ahead here. good quality as well it was a good quality. and if i'm boastman i'm having a real run out of last source up the hill you 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 would really get past carter here you'd really yeah. push it oh total piece has crashed at Pua. that could be a safety five. car uh, I don't. I maybe BSC. not because no one's near him. I think simply pitted because he thought that was going to be a safety car. I think he preempted a safety car. And now he's going to make softs do ten laps. That's bold. That's very bold. But that it does bold. limit his time loss, and it means he, he'll take pain later on. But everybody's tired to take pain later on. So not a bad shout. Certainly, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out and see whether the half drivers react. One of them's got to at some point because he's on lap thirteen. So he's this... both man now. Yeah, he's take it away. Not pressing his ERS though, so he's four tenths. I don't think he's going to be close. That's three tenths, two tenths, but um, he's going down the inside. Very late in the day, and has he got the move done? I think he has. Yes, cool hands, Carter. Um, not willingly, but he accepts it, and he's squeezed out. Boastman now takes the position, and with that, could probably take two or three seconds because if he does get to the bit lane first. He'll have the optimum strategy, and I think, if it was me, I'd pit now. Pit now, you come out ahead of 14th, and it means you've got a clear run at the cars uh, yeah. ahead. Spot on. Absolutely spot on. And we'll keep an eye on Simply's tyre percentages as he makes his way through the laps. What well, is great to see after 13 laps, back to front is only 23 seconds. That's fantastic. Uh, IFR Reese uh, just going on board with him for a second. I believe he's just passed Mr. Bosnia. And Reese is going to make his way up 16.6, his leader gap. So let's see, as Jack said before, how many points he can get. Six seconds or five and a half, six seconds it is for a wing change. And that would have cost him a lot because everyone was so tight, Jack. I mean, literally. Oh, here difficult. comes Carter. It might be another oh. Haas switch into a bus stop chicane. Bozeman's got the inside line. Is Carter going to try and throw it in? No. Bozeman. Who is it? Is it Carter? It's yeah. Carter that's pitted. Um, that's that's key. Uh, that's a very good move from Cool Hands Carter. He's had his voice craft question, but he's answered a few critics there because that was very intelligent. I'm a bit surprised that Bozeman was caught napping as much as he was. But uh, no, you have to give credit to Cool Hands Carter there. Excellent move. And it could net him two or three seconds. Uh, so simply ties after that lap was five and six. And he's got ten laps to do. Uh, here comes so Bolin to overtake Bozeman to take the proper race lead officially. And the Williams driver is now past. And uh, Freepo is now behind the Haas driver, of course. Then comes Rowan, Calzo and Vaporizer. Bit of a gap to Stinson. Um, and that would require probably a safety car jump. Meanwhile, though didn't quite get ahead of United Bosnia. Uh, he exited ahead, but Bosnia was right on the back of him and just simply used DRS to pass him through. And no, he has, well, he's, he's lost out again. 
made a bit of a mistake at Lacombe, and that is Cool Hands Carter through. But it does mean by staying out an extra lap, the Boastman has got a little bit more of a gap between those drivers, and he certainly won't be coming out behind that Force India unless things go really south. United Bosnia has just had a bit of a scrap with that's a yellow flag, it's a Ferrari again coming out of no name corner. Ooh, Spinala is uh, what his nickname should be at the moment. The two Ferraris having a few issues this evening, could be set up wise, I'm not too sure. I'm not a genius. What I do know is Rowan is seriously pushing fruitful because Bozeman cost him a lot of time and Rowan might go for a cheeky dive bomb inside the chicane. Waits for the opportunity. Bozeman then goes into the pits and that's put fruitful outside of DRS but obviously kept rowing in it. And Calzo is right behind them too, so we can go on board with Fruitful's gearbox. I have a feeling Fruitful may be in trouble here as we head down the Kemmel straight in a few seconds. Bolling's clear, 1.8 now. Boatman has done him an absolute worldie of a favour. Up the hill we go, on board with Fruitful's gearbox. And here comes Rowan, Calzo and Vapor. Is any of them going to make moves? Nicely timed to do so. We're already halfway down the Kemmel straight and I don't see anything happening. And it's he all stayed the same. He tucked his DR, he shut his DRS and tucked in. Um, but it's a bit of a train because you've got Rowan, you've got Calzo, Vaporizer, all you know within a second of um, of, of Rowan, who himself is only half a second behind Fruitful. Fruitful's uh, got a very wide Williams now. It must be said. So simply rush 9.4 seconds off the leader with eight laps to go. What can he do on those soft tyres, knowing that two cars in front of him have penalties? You have to navigate his way past Stinson and then try and catch up to Vaporizer and see what he can do from there uh, with that five second gap uh, between Stinson and Vaporizer. But let's see what uh, simply can do. Cut half a second in a few corners. And Boseman with another penalty there. Not being made for 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 for. for double F's uh, for the Ferrari's jack at the back no, um, spins um, crashes yeah, yeah I think at this point it's just get round and see what comes your way to be honest and you know you've still got a few laps if a safety car is to come out um, you know 18th place for Cordell and Golo is not what he was uh, we can start the season with he was very quick towards the end of last season Timmy well he's reserving there's nothing really you know if he's to finish 17th he's to finish 17th not really much that he can do um, so it's just a case of again he was going to pick up scraps here I'm interested to see what Simply does now I think 6 is definitely yeah. on the car because I think he's well he's within DRS of Stinson and if these four um, from 2nd to 5th hold each other up anymore he's going to be right in amongst it isn't he I think Rowan may have a chance here. it depends if he's got some testicles is he going to go for it he's going to stay behind and Calzo breaks, ex breaks extremely late and just misses Rowan's gearbox. I feel like an overtake or two is coming. Simply has got past Stinson at the end of the Kemmel straight. That's key. Now he can crack on. Leading gap was 9.5 with a bit of traffic past 9.1. Can he pull away now and catch up to that pack in front? So it's seven laps to do it. How long is that? 13 minutes? That's quite a long time. I don't think he'll get to the lead, but he'll certainly get to this train. Won't Do you think you might see him on a podium interview? Essentially. Um, it depends on whether he gets stuck in that DRS train or whether he can make make the most of it. Rowan's dropped back by eight tenths or so. I think um, Fruitful's been a bit canny in the second sector, just uh, you know, really making hay and taking advantage of the fact that the, the uh, turbulence is going to affect Rowan. Rowan is only really now starting to get back on him, so the slipstream effect has gained him a tenth, but he lost half a second in that middle sector, and Calzo here could be on for a move into the bus stop, and no, not quite a tenth behind, but not quite ever, close enough for the Flying Scotsman. Do you ever sit there, I know I do, and just think, go for it, just go for it, yeah. and you ever, you ever think, oh, I would, uh, and then you're like, okay, well, let's remember That's this is one of the cleanest. In the commentary box. Um, you would, though. That's you why just... we're in the commentary box and why they're out there. They've all got championships to think of, and when they do make the move, they're gonna have, they have to make sure that it's there and then. They will oh, was slow. They will go for it. Rowan was incredibly think... slow coming out of that curb. I know he's got DRS and McKay for. Oh, why are you not burning your battery, Calzo? You might have had a go there. He might still have a go. He's, he's teasing. He's teasing. He stays behind. If he would have burnt his battery, yeah, Jack, he would have got past, surely. 
Potentially, but um, go for it. Potentially, but you can't risk. Uh, they're not going to risk the car. At the end of the day, these are drivers who have got a lot oh, of experience. Oh, someone's Ooh, out! It's car. a double retirement. It's a double retirement into the com, and it's Charlie and Dre Sebastian. And the Alfa Romeo who's done so well and Dresse Basson who is on his way up have collided into the com and that is an incredibly late safety car at Spa Franca Champs. What has happened there? There's a Ferrari who's just about to go past it and that's Timmy and we might get a better idea of where exactly it was. Oh, it's wheel to wheel action I'm sure. Or well, someone yeah, got stuck like and the ghost and didn't work. The other one and it's marched the pair of them to the wall and that wall is pretty lethal. Great news if you're a Ferrari, though. We said about <laughs> staying in. No, we said about staying in. Cordelingo is, is a minute off of anybody else. Yeah, no out. blue flags. He's going yeah. to get back to the uh, end. No blue flags. He's going to get to the right to the back of the crocodile. They'll probably have two, three laps here. Might even be two laps. That is going to be a simply podium. News. I can tell you tell that. You this... no, I'm not so sure. Well, Bolin has stayed so sure. out. Fruitful has stayed out. Those will be older. Rowan has... Um, well, we can check. Well, I mean, we have the task system. His tyres are uh, 28%. That's, that's not much. Calzo pits. Calzo could be one to watch. It's a cheap pit stop. Stinson Is it pit. a cheap pit stop? Where's it going to come out? Yes, it is. Uh, great news for Risa as well. Risa can pit. He's going to lose... Stinson has damage. Worst a second. Stinson has 6% damage. Does that mean he's going to leave it? Is that a lime green? I think that's a yeah, lime green. leave it. You'd leave it if he had 6% damage. Carter's um, in trouble, by the way, because he's got a three-second penalty, and he's the only no one of the like top hands. lot who, ha well, well, Calzo is well, apart from Calzo, but Calzo's on fresh tyres, so Calzo will easily dispose of him. You would have thought. So, um, sim so simply, so it's for two Williams. Uh, they're on the mediums that they pitted on strategy. Then comes Ron Vaporizer. Then comes the soft tyre runners. Calzo, Stinson, and Reese on brand new softs. The safety car could could come in at the end of 18 but i suspect it'll come in on 19 and that'll p11 on two lap old softs just to say he's he's really saved himself there limmy and i agree with what you say now those who are on soft tires simply maybe gotta go for it. Car to make. if i was if i was the williams that didn't pit i'd have mm. pitted if that makes sense so if i was yes, bowling, yes. I'd have pitted if i was fruitful having seen that bowling hadn't pitted you would have pitted yeah you put, mm -hmm. put soft tires on He'd have come out at worst six, and I think he'd have been able to make the move from there because it's now. I think Calza. I'm not going to say he's the favourite for the race. He's probably too far back, but yep. simply Cool Hands Carter and Calzo uh, have put themselves in the, in prime position one way or the other. This I think the Renault is probably going to be the man to watch. I don't think we're going to have very long under this safety car. It either, could come so. in this lap. Eve, uh, CJ, I can't see job. I just wrote on this paper jack before the race. I put. VSC, safety cars, weather, I want a good race. We haven't had the weather, we haven't had the VSCs, but what we have got is a very late safety car. And we got two half, we got, not two half, but we got four people on mediums who really, really, really want to do well and, and get this. But the soft people behind have shown great pace this evening. Eight tenths of a second on the same tyre separated the whole grid. It's different tyres now. And everyone apart from Simply and Carter have... Uh, brand new tyres. This is going to be an epic rundown to finish this race. The only people who've got issues are the people with penalties. You can see them. The safety car looks to be do doing another lap, which may just save uh, those oldest softs and the medium people. It is doing another lap. I'll put the penalties on screen. It's 3-3-3-6. Three, three, three um, people asking in the chat, why did Boseman pit? Jack, do you have an answer for that? Um, no, is the answer. I can only assume that he again wanted soft tyres. He's still tense, so he's still in a decent position in terms of points. But he has got a penalty. He's got a couple of penalties, so... Uh, it, it's a, it was a really difficult call if you're behind the other car. Not so for Risa, because Risa was 8 or 9 seconds behind Stintz. It didn't cost him any time. But um, if you're Boseman, who it probably would have cost time, because he was only a couple of seconds behind his teammate... Then it really does start to uh, to impact your race. Um, and you've got tip, you know, you've got uh, quite a few drivers there who've gambled, dropped just outside the points for longer get or for, for gains longer term gains, you know, towards the end of the race. And it's a balancing act. If you were sort of 
in the latter points or the lower points but on balance I think most of them have got this right certainly they've, it's better to gamble and uh, try and see if we can get four or five positions rather than say we are uh, thank you everybody for over 300 comments this stream that's sublime position changes on screen and this, of course, doesn't include the penalties. So the two Williams still the same from Likes Out. Rowan Vapies are up two. Simply's up seven and on good good tyres to finish this and push them mediums ahead. Down six for Reese. got that wind damage early on, but he has no wind damage now. And he has new softs like his Mercedes teammate in front of him. And uh, down position, 13 for Charlie, five for Dressay. That was an incident I'd like to see. I didn't quite see it live. I saw the aftermath. Um, didn't quite see what happened live, but uh, we believe it was a wheel-to-wheel. Two cars went out at exactly the same time in the same place. Um, so unfortunate well, said, for those two. Said earlier in the stream, didn't I, Limmy, that um, you really wouldn't send Charlie to go and get your lottery numbers, and he's proven that today again. Oh, Just yeah, you did. You did. Dismal bit of luck. Um, he was running really, really well as well, but um, he's, well, if he didn't have bad luck, he'd have no long luck at all. He's the cause equivalent to Mark Webber in that respect. Certainly the pace is there, but just no luck at all. Safety car is in this lap. We've got three laps. Balls to the wall action I'm forecasting here. <laughs> As uh, <laughs> okay. It should be good. Uh, Blaze, uh, three laps sprint to the finish. Yes, uh, Dazza Snipes says 40 hour dump down the chemo straight all cars. Um, yeah, probably. Um, this is going to be a huge safety car restart because there's two ways Bolling could do this. He could go incredibly late and try and catch him or go incredibly early and, and catch him like that. I've seen both here in Belgium. Uh, we did, uh, I don't know if I was in the commentary watch for Belgium early enough last season. I can't quite remember. No. But what I do know is the safety car is now in. And Bolin knows it in. It's in and he's gone. And Rowan read it well and he's just behind Fruitful. And there comes Vaporizer. No overtaking until the finish line, of course. But here we go. It's a three-lap sprint race for the first race of the season. And it's led by the two Williams. Then comes Rowan, then Vaporizer, then Simply Rush, and then Carter. And then comes Calzo, then the two Mercedes and Bozeman. I don't see any overtakes coming down to turn one. But... Yes. <laughs> that doesn't mean there won't be any as we head up the hill for the 20th time in this Grand Prix. The two Williams make it through. I'll just flick through every car as we go up the hill. All clean so far. Vaporizer Six is making a move on Rowan for third. Vaporizer making a move on Rowan for third. Let's go on board with that. It could be a big move. 15 points or 12 for these two. Both are going to throw it into the com. And both of them are not going to give up. And the Alpha Tavi has gone a little bit wide and come back in. No space for Vaporizer. Both getting shaky. And I think that's the only one, Jack. That was tentative. And Vaporizer Rowan... has hit Rowan. Carry He's on, carry on. Rowan going into Rivage. And that's moved him wide a little bit. That'll annoy Rowan because Rowan's quite a spicy oh! driver. Sticks him in the wall. And here comes Simply Rush now down the inside. He's going to get two for the price. One into Puan. No, not quite. Has to back out rather wisely. But um, I thought, and I was going to say, but I didn't want to interrupt, that the medium runner, the last medium runner, is going to be incredibly uh, vulnerable. As Cool Hands Carter now tries his hand down the inside. That was nearly ending in tears. And oh my goodness me. That's Calzo now off. I think Cool Hands Carter. No, they've saved it. No, I think they've saved it just Oh, um, that was close, though, wasn't it? No, that was close. Great news for the Williams. Rowan's they, in trouble. They're gone. They're yeah. G-O-N-E uh, gone, aren't oh, they? Oh, yeah. That's their constructors starting off with a bang. Here comes Rowan. Uh, sorry, here comes Simply Rush on Rowan. Calzo's coming on Carter as well. There might be two moves in one collar. Simply Rush breaks late. Tries to go around the outside. Can't do it. Kuhans Carter goes for the inside move. He can't do it either. The two cars Carter's staying ahead. As uh, Boseman, here comes Stinson past Carter. So Carter got a hot, horrific exit. And there's a yellow flag at the back because someone's hit the pit wall. And I think Conzo has been disqualified for hitting the pit wall. Yeah, for blocking the pit lane. Boseman's pitted as well. So I uh, don't quite know what's happened. There's a Mercedes of Risa has gone, gone round as well at last source. So something's gone on there. But oh, the dear. Uh, Ferrari of Timmy, Timmy where to next made up two places. And you were about oh, one Jack. Simply might go for a podium interview around the outside of the com. Is he going to go for it? No, he had soft tyres. You've got to go for that, sir. Maybe he's waiting for the DRS on the final lap, Jack, which is probably clever. Sensible but move. A free for as well. Move is what will we want to see, but it's a sensible move. I think Rowan's going to be very vulnerable unless he gets his skates on through the middle sector here. Those <laughs> soft tyres are at the point now where they're going to start to cry enough. Those medium tyres and no spring chickens either, so it's evened itself out rather well, Limmy. 
Yeah, uh, watch out for Rowan, treat his rear end like a donkey, Wizard says. Here comes Calzo on Vaporizer on the inside of campus. Is the Renault going to make the move on Vaporizer? Oh, gets it through beautifully and Vaporizer's in trouble. Uh, a bit of bad exit traction, maybe oversteer coming out of that uh, final bit of a campus. And he's got the Mercedes of Stinson. Uh, behind him, here comes Kowser with some slipstream on Simply Rush. This is going to be incredible as we go up the hill for one final time very shortly. Williams have played this absolutely perfectly, haven't they? Look at them, they just walked away. It was, it was because of a wheel-to-wheel, -wheel, wasn't it, between Rowan and Vaporizer, and Stinks and Rabbit outside of a bus stop chicane. Good move, and Vaporizer lets him have it quite, quite easily, actually. So, we think Fruitful won't be able to make the move on Bolling. Uh, one second and the battery will go on board with Rowan's gearbox here this is one of the final chances that the drivers are going to have to maybe get on the podium interviews trust me it's a good place to be uh, here comes Simply Ross here comes Calzo Rowan is in super no, trouble are, here and he's got like Jack said limited ERS but he's not catching Ca Simply Rush is not catching Simply Rush has no ERS, he's used it all. Rowan actually had probably about 10-15% more, so he played it well there. But I don't think it's over, his problems are not over. There's still another place to go, but uh, Simply he's now got to conserve as much as he can because he's got to make a move now into the bus stop and he's got Calzo behind him. Calzo <coughs> has got a bit more power available. Carter, oh, Carter's got past the McLaren, but the McLaren, I don't know if it was touched, but he was off and he hit a wall. I'm not sure if he's damaged. It didn't look great, but Jacob Eaton. Yes, he is. Damaged. Ah, oh, that might have been a wheel-to-wheel -wheel through no-name corner and the McLaren coming off second best. And now he's been overtaken by the Ferrari. The Ferrari's actually getting points. No, I said 10 laps to go, everybody. I said the Ferrari's yeah. without. Oh, Calzo! Cool Calzo's also got damage. Snap of oversteer coming out of Stavlot, and here we go to the line. Uh, the Williams are coming first, but I've got to well, make sure I don't miss something from behind. But I don't think I will. Bolling from Likes Out has led every single lap, just apart from a slight bit of one lap coming out of a pit's second. But here he is to take the first win of the season. It's IFR Bolling. Congratulations with his teammate carrying out a flawless Williams victory. Here comes Rowan on the podium. First time this season. Well done. And there comes Simply. What a result in P4. That is. And a good start. But for the uh, driver of 8% of you said who could win the championship, Vaporizer gets P5. Yeah, so uh, penalties really did affect the Haas team. Uh, cool Hans Carter with his um, damage with 8th across the line. He finishes 11th. Um, I'd be interested to see exactly what happened between the Haas and the McLaren because Jacob has left rather quickly after finishing 13th. So, uh, yeah, no, Williams did it absolutely perfectly, didn't they? Uh, I think you, can, you cannot argue with them. And um, I think it's an all-Dutch front uh, uh, first uh, three, isn't it? Um, I think yeah, Simply it's... will be ruin the fact that he didn't make the move earlier on Rowan. Rowan was there for the taking, and he maybe could have saved his ERS because I think that would have been a lot more helpful in the slipstream. But uh, no, no, they've uh, both done really, really well. The uh, Williams drivers and Rowan, I mean, that was balls to hang on, wasn't it? He, he would not be beaten, would he, for that third place? Absolutely. Great race by Rowan. He's set to move before the season. I'm going to try. And that is what you get when you try a very, very hard-fought third place. I'm sure you're inviting the podiums. Um, I'm indeed. Thank you again, everyone in the stream. Absolutely excellent. I have been trying to read your comments all the way through. I do have to look at TAS and the trap map sometimes, so I don't. So I do my job correctly. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. Simply Rush, 12th to 4th, could have got a podium. But I'm very happy for Rowan. Calzo, P6, excellent. Stinson, P7. Caladre, 17th to 8th. By the way, Caladre got not spun on purpose, but got spun twice and still got 8th. Could have done better uh, if he came out of those incidents, unlike Vettel, uh, a couple of seasons ago. Timmy gets a ninth place. The other Ferrari gets a 10th. So me saying the Ferrari 17th and 18th is over, absolutely not. Defy the odds. Timmy 18th to 9th. Congratulations, sir. Only missed out on 8th by 99 thousandths of a second. And well That's done to see you. That's why you don't retire, though. Early doors. Because but some there's names, still something Jack. in it. There's always still going to be something in there, isn't there? 
some names though that I expected more. Dynastics, Carter in 11th, I expected more. Of course, that might have been influenced by the penalty and what happened with Jacob on the final lap or the second to final lap. Um, but what what a great race. What a good start to a season. Excellent, excellent racing, wasn't it? Certainly an awful lot of fun towards the end, wasn't it? Um, I think... You know, the safety car obviously set the cat amongst the pigeons, but um, I think for the Williams Euro that are currently in the uh, chat, we're just waiting for Rowan now to arrive. Uh, I think, and we have got Rowan. So, uh, well, I'm going to start with the interviews. I'm going to start with the, uh, the man that finished in third place and arguably the most action towards the end of the race. Uh, and that is Contest of Speed Rowan. You've got the cause name and you've certainly been the cause talking point for that third place. You just weren't going to be beaten there after that safety car, were you, Rowan? Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. It was a hard battle. Lost two seconds on Frightful, but yeah, I wanted to attack him on the end, but the vaporizer attacked me, so hard battle. So when you're going side by side through the Lacombe chicane, when you're on the outside of the left-handed uh, segment of that, what, what's your thought process? Because the gap's going to close on you, the corner, the angle is going to close on you into the flat-out right-hander. Was there any, ever any question of you backing out, or was it just, this is my line, I'm going to have it, and we're going to sort it out um, on the exit? I never backed out. I always keep fighting. I'm not a easy person to overtake. I back that up, Rowan. Fruitful said in an interview before the season ended that uh, you are one of the hardest people to get past because you're so good at defending. Um, it's nice to have you in the podium interviews. I've wanted you to be here. Um, you have that incident with Montana at the end of the season. We exchanged some messages and you said, right, recovery period. I'm going to come back next season. What a start to the season, Rowan. How do you assess your performance, sir? Come on. Yeah, it was amazing. I wasn't expected that I had so much pace, but I could follow the top, so great. Uh, where did you quali, Rowan? I just forgot. I tried to find... Where did you quali this evening? Qualified P5, I think. Okay. Gained two, uh, two positions on the start. Nice. Um, so, was there any... I ask this question a lot, but I kind of find it interesting. Any moment there that you were scared that you were going to lose your podium? Did you know? Did you have an idea of how the two behind you were struggling with their battery or things like that? No, it... it three people tried to attack me. I had not much battery as well, but I need to get a good exit every time and I managed to do that so yeah happy with the podium mate we're ha well I'm happy for you um, I want you to get a podium I want you to be on my first interview uh, I normally ask a bonus it's hungry next week how do you feel about hungry and do you feel you can replicate your performance I hope so it's not a bad track for me so I hope it can be a podium or even a win Good man, Rowan. Well, I like to hear it. Well done. Have a good night and enjoy your podium. Thank you. Pleasure. Okay, we're going to go to second place. Uh, last season's champion after a uh, discussion in the stewards' room and that's half our fruitful. Fruitful. Um, excellent second place. Um, I think that's the way to, to start your championship defence with uh, following the Williams 1 2. Talk about it from your perspective because. Not an awful lot really happened um, for you guys, and even when the safety car came out, you, you guys really weathered that storm too. Exactly. Well, um, I'm, I've yet to come out the backpack of uh, of Bolin. Um, <laughs> now he, he carried me through the race. Uh, I just couldn't keep up uh, in his DRS, which is quite easy on this track. So I had re not really a threat from behind as I, ha I had DRS. Um, that changed. Just before the safety car, I got outside of the opponent's DRS and then I was really scared for the podium. Because I just wasn't confident enough for my own pace to to be able to keep up with Bolin or stay in front of Rowan. Was it simply? No, a lot of guys. Uh, so, yeah, no, um, Bolin carried me through it. Definitely. 
Did you ever consider pitting for soft tyres? Because um, I mentioned in commentary that it might have been worth Williams, you know, whichever oh, yeah. driver didn't pit, the other driver pitted. Yeah, I, I really considered it. Uh, just before the bus stop, I was still changing up my mind. Um, when I saw the guys pitting for shoves, I was a bit scared, but I just had to go for mediums as it was too big of a risk, which everyone saw at the end to uh, to come out in traffic and to to be able to have to overtake other guys, um, yeah, which which was a mess in the end. So I'm happy with my choice with the mediums. Well done, fruitful. Nice to have you in the podium interviews again. Thank you. Um, I have a interesting question. Okay. Um, now I know you're in this for a drivers' championship. I know you're also in this for the constructors' championship. I know I also know you want to do your best for the overall constructors for Williams, but. I felt during that race there were three or four moments where you was in six temps where with full battery deployment and fuel you may have got past your teammate. Why didn't you have a go? Because it was very clear, incredibly clear that you were happy to sit behind. Uh, yes, because <laughs> I was in his backpack. No, I just the um, our chance of getting away from the likes of Rowan was a lot bigger when Bolin was ahead of uh, ahead of me, so I didn't feel like passing him because I wasn't confident enough to to be able to drive away or drive away with Bolin from the rest of the guys. I just wanted us to get a one-two, which was more realistic with Bolin in front. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. That's... Answers a question, and uh, also, oh, I was going to say something. Um, did have a question in my head, Jack. It was a very good question as well. Because what I tend to do with asking questions, I think of a good question. I mean, I listen to your answer properly and then forget the next question. Um, oh, yeah, I do. So we, I obviously joined your party uh, before the race and I was watching you lot do some quality laps and uh, obviously I watched your race. Um, what was missing? Why were you in Bolling's pa ba backpack or getting the carry? Or what, what were you missing tonight? Because you, you said that before we even entered quality. But you were missing something. Um, what I was missing, I've yet to discover. Um, I honestly don't know. I just, uh, I wasn't motivated enough to practice a lot for this race. So, and I just don't like Belgium as it is the biggest DRS train of the whole calendar. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I don't don't like these DRS train tracks. Um, yeah, I don't know what was missing. I just liked to sit behind Bolin for now. <laughs> so we can be secure that you'll be back for a win in Hungary next week. I love the track, so I, I definitely hope to go for, uh, for a win. Good man. Thank you for your time, and well done. No problem. Thank you. Bolin, a, uh, a dominant victory, really. It was almost a light to flag uh, win. 1-2 for Williams. You've moved, uh, moved, moved over to Williams for this season. You know, really, um, well, was there any difficulties at all during that race? Because it certainly from our side didn't look like there was. You know, well, was, was there anything that you found even re remotely challenging? Mm, yeah, in the first lap, I was looking more behind me what the other guy's pace was. But uh, I know for myself that I have pretty good pace on this track, like in quality and in the race. So I was confident enough to go in the lead and... Uh, yeah, try uh, to pull away. In the first few laps, it wasn't that good, but uh, at the end, my pace was coming up, and it was yeah, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, just pretty good. Yeah. How important was teamwork um, between yourself and Brutal in terms of securing that? Because I noticed even after the safety car. You both just simply driven away. I know that was partly down to Rowan and uh, and Vaporizer um, clashing. I think it's fair to say the third place. But you know, how important was it to you to look after Fruitful? Yeah, it, we saw that Vaporizer was really close uh, in the first sector on Rowan, and we saw that they were battling. And we said to each other, "Let's push now." And we are just a few corners uh, after we were, he was out of the arrest. So then we pushed a little bit more. And then it was an easy one too for us. Bolin, well done. Um, fantastic pace. I think you know that. Um, 
I was with the IFR a lot, like I've already said, before you joined. And uh, you just came in and set a 40.5, like it was nothing. And then come Quali, you set a 40.5, two temps quicker than anyone else. What are you doing that the others are not? What, what are you, what, what's giving you that extra two temps? Because we saw the grid was so tight. Yeah, I don't know, the whole week I was practicing on my new wheel. Uh, just, I was prepared to go to drive on the wheel. Uh, but uh, I needed to go to my work and I sleep uh, on my work when I'm done. Because it's pretty far to drive away from my home. So I can't take my wheel, so I need to drive on the pad. But I did like uh, five uh, time trail laps and then I won and then I think two qualities and then I'm back on my pace on the pad. So uh, it's not that big that I practice. Good stuff. And uh, of course, FIFA went for an undercut on you and yeah. uh, you came out second. Um, yeah. And you obviously made the overtake down the camel straight. Was you ever considering not making that overtake or was you definitely like, yeah, I'm going for this? Nah. I think if I was staying behind Fruit, I think I was uh, all the time really close to him and overheating my tires. So I wanted to go in the lead and try to get both of our, we both to get uh, out of Rohan or the guys behind. That they, uh, yeah, that, how can I say it? Um, that we two are pulling away from the others. Yes. When I'm in front. Mm hmm. That's uh, understood. And your bonus question is, yeah. Fruitful really fancies a win in Hungary. How are you yeah. going to stop him? <laughs> uh, I hope I can drive now on my wheel. So I don't I, I don't think I can uh, fight for the win, but I will try it and see what happens. Good man. Well, first race of the season, you got the first win. Well done. Yeah, thank you. And Jack... The race, it was a quick race, uh, 41 minutes it was, with that two laps of the safety car. Very fast pace, lots of action. Your final thought? I think it was um, uh, a very action-packed race, even before the safety car. There was certainly a lot to keep us busy, as there always is at Spa. Plenty of overtaking opportunities, um, despite the DRS trains. Uh, and I thought, personally, that um, you know, the drivers in the lead, the drivers at the front, really deserved to be where they were. Certainly, they were the ones that kept out of trouble. Um, Rowan got his elbows out when he needed to, and I think the Williams drivers looked after really, each other really, really well. Uh, just important, a commercial message. Um, we've got to mention, obviously, the we are now in uh, partnership, Contest of Speed, with the F1 Armchair Experts blog and, uh, and wider motorsport group. So, uh, Contest of Speed now looking to get on board with a lot more partners, so it's important that we look after those. Mm. You caught me at the wrong time. I was eating a, a piece of chocolate. I need that sugar back. Do you um, need me to? Uh, do you need me to fill whilst you swallow your galaxy? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, it, you can, you can carry fast. on, though. Well, so could you need the cricket analogy that I used last uh, to describe last season in terms of it being yeah. uh, a fast tip seesawing test match? Um, I would say that this was a bit more of a, ten, a T20 blast. Very fast paced. Very quick. Um, and you never know quite where the next action was going to come from. So. Um, Hungary's going to be a bit more of a chess match, I feel. It's going to be a bit more of a, of a test match in that um, it's going to be very, very tactical. It's going to yes. be very patient. A little bit longer and as well, isn't it? Whoever does have the best tactics and whoever plays the conditions the best will win the will win the race. Yeah, I, I, I love Hungary. It's a little bit longer as well. Um, so more drama. More drama. Hey, no rain tonight, ladies and gentlemen, but... It was a good race, a very good race, and the safety car as well. Whoa, who could have called it? And I can't wait to see that incident because two cars there, Charlie and Jesse Basson, who were actually doing quite well, have obviously had a problem. Uh, no lights clicked this evening, everybody. I was so happy. Um, we'll, we'll keep Reese doing the lobbies, I'm pretty sure. Um, and that made me so happy. Jack, thank you so much. It's good to be back with you, sir. I really enjoyed it. Um, and uh, everyone else as well thank you for tuning in thank you for listening to the interviews um you got am1 at 2 a.m uk time in about two and a half hours time uh and then we have eu4 tomorrow and then we have the endurance full quality friday endurance race 
Saturday. And then you've got the iRacing on Sunday. There you go, KV. I mentioned it for you. Um, I think that's it, Jack. I think, for uh, a week. No, that's uh, that's going to be it until next week, obviously, barring um, the additional leagues and indeed AM1. But E4 tomorrow night as well, so certainly plenty of racing to uh, to continue. Looking forward to it, and I shall see you this time next week, if not before. Yes, absolutely. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Stay safe, have a great night, and we'll see you at the Hungaro Ring in a week's time to continue the EU1 Championship. See you then.